Okay, so today we're making a tentacle kind of foggy sci-fi render. Let me show you what it looks like and then we'll get into it. Okay, so here's the render. It's super cool. Now, what we're going to make isn't going to look exactly like this. The procedure we're using, you always get different results, and that's what makes it really exciting. So let me show you that procedure, and we'll uh, make a cool render. Okay, so first what we're going to do is make our emitter object. So I'm just going to use an icosphere, and I'm going to subdivide it just a little bit. All right, now we need to add a particle system. So let's go over here, click New, and then right down here on Render, you're going to pick path. All right, now if we go to cache and click bake, we just get this. This is not what we want. So let's delete bake and click the back arrow to redo it. And we need to go to our field weights and turn gravity all the way off. So field weights is in your particle setting area. All right, now to give it a shape, what we're going to do is we are going to add two force fields. So let's add the turbulence force field. And what that's going to do is when the particles go out, they're going to sort of like, instead of just going straight out, they're going to like do this and just go in these crazy shapes. And then one more force field we're going to add is a vortex. And with that one kind of, you can see what it's visually doing, but it takes the particles as they're emitting out, they kind of go in a spiral shape. So let's go to the strength right down here for the force field settings. We're going to take the strength and bring it up to maybe around 13. And then on the vortex, we're going to give it, give it a strength of three. All right, now let's click on our emitter object and let's bake this. So right here on cache, we'll just click bake and let's see what happens. Okay, it's right there. So what we have to do is on the field settings, our force field, you have to click it, go down to the field settings and uncheck effect location. And so now it's gonna go to what we baked, which is right here. So I'm just gonna add a wireframe to this so we can't see it. And there's our object. So the vortex is a little too strong. So what you can do is you can go back, click on your icosphere, delete the bake, go back. And I'm going to click on the vortex here and give it a strength of one. Now let's go on all our force fields and click effect location again. Effect location. Let's click on our icosphere and let's bake it. All right, now we have something we're going to have something cool with. All right, now let's fix the problem with these these sharp angles and that's in the viewport display of our particle setting. So stay in the particle settings and we're going to go down to viewport display. And then right here on strand steps, we'll make it seven. And so what that's going to do, the smaller the strand step, the more geometric our lines are going to be. And if you click eight, I believe it disappears. Yeah. So we get a seven is the smoothest we can make it. And then we're going to add a smoothing modifier to it later to make it even smoother when we have some problems. All right. So we have this and we can also add another force field to affect what we have here. So let's put another turbulence in and let's just play with a little bit. See if we make it really crazy. It just doesn't do what we want. So let's put it right around there. Okay. Now let's click on our icosphere here, go to the modifiers and I'm going to convert this wire and I'm going to click on the icosphere and hit H and hide it. Okay. So now we have this, let's click edit operator search and type in convert and then click curve from mesh slash text. All right. So now we're going to have this mesh right here. So now we can go in right over here and add some geometry to this. So right here, you'll see the geometry tab, click that and then click depth. And that's going to add some geometry here. Let's go over here under fill mode and click full. Now we actually have tubes. Right now they're actually square tubes. You can kind of see what's going on right there. So to fix that, we go down by bevel, we click resolution. I'm gonna give it a resolution of two and see now it's a little more geometric and then I'm gonna shade smooth and I'm maybe give it five. So now we have some pretty good tubes. Let's set up our camera and get, get a good composition. So now I'm just gonna look around here and try to find some cool composition that we can work with. So I think, I think right here, I think right here works. So let's shift a add a camera control, alt delete, snap it to grid, and then click on your camera right here, the icon and on focal length, just drag it out. So we have a, a wide angle on our lens and let's just look around a little bit. See if we can see something even better. I'm going to zoom in. I think if I make it, so I'm going to point it down. I think we found something even cooler. Here we go. Here's an interesting composition. 
There we go. So if you want to see how it looks, you can click on the camera and then right here on viewport display alpha. And so that's what is going to be in the render. I'm going to bring the alpha down just a little bit. All right. So now we have our composition. Let's hit Z and look dev and see how it looks in render view. So I'm going to click on this geometry and quickly add a metallic material to it. Make it metallic. Sweet. So this is what we're going with now. Let's add some lighting. All right. So shift a, I'm going to add an area lamp. And we're just going to, and we're going to bring it over this way, see where the camera is at this way. So we're just going to rotate it. We're going to bring it up like that and then hit R twice. And you can see kind of where it points. You just point it right at the area we want. All right. So let's check out how that looks in the render. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go to our world settings really quickly and turn off that gray background. It's always gray by default. Just bring it down. We can check out how it looks. So our lighting looks pretty good for now. Let's quickly add our volumetric lighting so that we can preview how it's going to look. So we're just going to add a big old sphere and make it cover up our scene All right, like that. And then let's add a principled volume. So click on your sphere, click new and principled volume. Now let's go up here to the shader, the shading preset and go to the node editor. And then I don't know why Blender has this on by default, but with the principled volume, you have to plug it into the volume and not the surface. And then we'll give it a density of 0.1. And let's see how that looks in the render. All right, now we have this cool lighting here in the background. I'm gonna give it a slightly blue tint on our area lamp, just like that. and. I'm going to give the strength at 300 and once now that the light is really bright, it's going to overtake the shader. So we have to make the shader a little bit darker. So it sort of absorbs that light, but we still get a lot of light in the volumetrics. All right. So just like that, this is looking really weird and sci-fi looking and we got this dynamic lighting with the highlights and the shadows here. So we only need one light for this render. Of course you can add, maybe you can add a light up here, which I'll do that just to demonstrate. So I'm just going to use a quick point light and bring it up, bring it up and out like this, sort of give it sort of a key light. I'm going to make it red and keep it at a hundred. And I think that's going to affect it just enough to where we can have, yeah, there we go. So yeah, now we have this dynamic lighting going on and I'm going to give it a strength of 50. So just, it's just sort of touching our metallic shader. All right, so there's volume, so it's going to be a hefty render. I would give it around 500 to a 1,000 samples, maybe around, I'd give it 800 samples. And then, of course, you would add denoising, and I would leave it at the default settings. Those are really good, and 1920 by 1080, and you're going to have a really cool render. So there you go. You made a weird tentacle render. If you make it, send it to me on Instagram. My Instagram's tagged in the description. Send it over. I'd love to see it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.